Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing co-immunoprecipitation. And for short, co-immunoprecipitation is often abbreviated to co-IP, like so. So, let's now imagine that we want to show that protein A and protein B are bound to each other. So let's say we have our protein complex of protein A bound to protein B here. And it, maybe it's within a solution of some other protein. So let's say protein C and protein D are still present. Okay, basically you're going to repeat the steps of immunoprecipitation almost exactly. In fact, completely exactly. What you're going to do is you're going to have all of these in a container. Okay, so you've got your uh, solution of a mixture of proteins in a container. And what you're going to do is add into this solution special little beads, okay, which are absolutely tiny, which have had antibody molecules attached to them, which are against protein A. Now clearly these antibody molecules are going to need to be directed against an epitope of protein A that is not affected by the binding of protein B, so maybe somewhere over here rather than somewhere over here. Okay, and that's why it's conceptually simpler than, simpler than to use monoclonal antibodies, because then we can use a monoclonal antibody um, that um, is against an epitope specifically that isn't affected by the binding of protein B. Okay, so what will then happen is the whole complex of protein A and protein B this time will bind to that anti-protein A antibody. Okay, and now it's the same step. When you put these um, beads into the solution, what will happen is the protein complexes of protein A and protein B will end up bound to the antibody molecules which are bound to the beads, okay, and the protein C and the protein D will remain in solution basically. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put this into a test tube, ultra centrifuge it, the beads along with their antibody molecules along with all the proteins that are bound to them will fall to the bottom and form the pellet and what's left, protein C and protein D, will remain in solution in the supernatant. You remove the supernatant off and then you have this pellet, okay, which will contain the beads, the antibody molecules and protein A and protein B. Now, if you, uh, you, what you will then do is analyze uh, what's in the pellet and you will find that both protein A and protein B are within the pellet. And what that shows is that protein B must bind to protein A because let's think through what would have happened if protein B hadn't bound to protein A. So if protein B was separate from protein A now, so if it's like this instead, you have protein A, protein B, protein C and protein D all separate, then what instead will happen is basically it's just a bigger version of what we did in immunoprecipitation, okay? So uh, what will happen is the protein A's will bind to the antibody, but protein C and D and also now protein B will remain in solution. Then when you ultracentrifuge it, protein A will drop to the bottom with the antibody molecules and the beads, but protein B, C and D will remain in the supernatant and therefore will be removed. So you won't find protein B within the pellet. So the presence of protein B within the pellet shows that it must have bound somehow to the beads. And the only way it can bind to the beads is if it has bound to protein A, which is bound to the antibody, which is bound to the beads. Okay, so that would show that protein A and protein B, there therefore bind together and form a complex. Okay, so we've done uh, what we intended to do. And basically you would say that you have shown that protein A and protein B were co-immunoprecipitated, basically. Okay, because when you uh, drop the beads down into this pellet, that process of the beads going down into the pellet is known as precipitation, which basically just means things coming out of solution and going into a solid. Okay, so you would say that protein A was precipitated in the pellet, and when both protein A and protein B were precipitated in the uh, pellet, that's called co-immunoprecipitation. Okay, or in full, you'd call this immunoprecipitation. So, that's why if you read papers all the time, they'll refer to things like, we showed that protein A and protein B were co-immunoprecipitated, ergo, uh, they form a protein complex. Okay, so that uh, that concludes our discussion of uh, co-immunoprecipitation.